We can do better. And I'm gonna make it happen. Okay, so here we have our main group of milking cows. It's one big group and they have access to four robots. So we got one in this corner, one in this corner, one right there, and the fourth one on the opposite side of that robot room. We got about 220 stalls here. I'm looking right now around 180. And over there, we have one big pack for dry cows. Dry cows are basically the cows that get a bit of a break from milking two months before they have their next calf. And then we have a group of fresh cows here. And you notice the environment for the dry cows is very similar for the environment by the fresh cows. And that's to minimize the stress for when they're transitioning to the milking herd. So they spend a little bit over here when they're well on their feet, and then we pull them out to the main herd. All right, so this is our fresh cow pack. After the cows have a calf, they move over here. They stay here for a little while until they're well on their feet. Here's a fresh cow that's had a calf not that long ago. And the calves, drinking on their moms. Wait a minute. It's not supposed to be possible to keep healthy calves with their mom. How is this possible? Look at that. These calves are not quite two months old. They're round, they're chunky, they're healthy, they're happy, and they're left with their mom. There's one management choice that we make that I feel I haven't quite explored enough. And that is removing the mom from their calf. If I talk to anybody in the industry, it's basically considered irresponsible to leave the calf with their mom because it's basically understood that the calf would be, suffer would be better off separated and kept in the calf hutch. You have less sick calves, less dead calves. It's basically better for the calf if we step in and raise them without the mom. I gotta say, like, I think these calves look better than the ones that we have in our calf hutches. Although, the one issue I do have is they're much more skittish. They're nowhere near as friendly because I don't do anything with them. I don't feed them. I don't take care of them. The mom does it all for me. So as a result, they're pretty skittish. But other than that, they look great. They're healthy. They're strong. So this calf here is about the same age as the ones that we have with the fresh cows. She looks good too. She's good and healthy. Here's another one, about the same age. Okay, they come right up to you and they're pretty keen for some milk. It's way friendlier than the ones I got in the pack with the fresh cows. Yeah, she's starting to get a little round too. And now to be fair, this is a 100% Holstein, whereas the calves that we have over by the fresh cows are half Angus. So it'll be a little chunkier that way. But we have other Anguses that we kept. They don't look nearly as chunky as the ones that we got over by the fresh cows. The real difference between dairy and beef, and the reason why beef producers are able to keep their calves with their mom is that beef, beef cows calve seasonally. They all calve in the spring, whereas dairy cows, they calve all year round. And in the spring, 
is, is starting to warm up. There's lots of fresh air and they're able to get the calves outside where they can be strong and healthy. Whereas on dairy farms, with the cows calving all year round, there's cows calving in the fall and in the winter when they, it starts getting colder and damp and muggy. And uh, the air quality just isn't as good. And then the flu, it's also flu season. And what ends up happening is that during those times of the year, they just, they just can't keep them healthy. They constantly get getting pneumonia. Pneumonia is the main is the main problem that producers run into when when keeping their calf with their mom. But these three calves is basically a proof of concept that if you get the ventilation right, calves can do really really well with their mom, even on dairy farms. So I kept these calves. They were born. Um, end of July, start of August. So the two months that they were out, it's been hot, so all the curtains are open, and the ventilation is basically as good as it gets. Air quality is excellent. And that's why these calves are able to thrive while most producers aren't able to make it work. But if we were able to build a barn where we were able to keep the air quality really, really top notch all year round, even in the winter, then theoretically it should be possible on a dairy farm to keep calves with their mom. So in order to make that work, basically you have to have enough air exchanges in the in the air in the in the barn that the air quality like the air doesn't get built up of ammonia or humidity and then and also bacteria then. And the way you have to do that is basically the inside of the barn has to be just as cold as it is outside during the winter. And by doing that, I think the air quality would be good enough, good enough that the calves could stay with their mom all year round. So obviously the cold wouldn't be an issue because look at these calves. These calf butchers, they're not insulated, they're not warm, they're super cold during the winter. And calf butchers are the gold standard for raising calves as far as getting them healthy and uh, raising good calves. It's a bit of a trend towards moving calves nowadays indoors in uh, special, specially built calf barns, but that's more for the producer's sake, not the calves. Farmers don't really want to have to deal with the elements in the snow and the rain and the cold when they're bringing bottles out to the calves and calf starter, or pellets that is. If they're able to handle the cold out here, then obviously they'll be able to handle the cold in basically a really well ventilated fresh cow barn. So basically what this experiment has taught me is that we were wrong. It is possible to leave calves with their mom and have the calves thrive and do well. As long as we have a barn with good enough ventilation. So it'll be a little while before this barn is full. We're milking now about 180 cows and the barn is built for 220. And in Canada, which is where I'm at right now, we are dealing with the quota system and there's only so much that we're able to buy. So it will be a while before this barn is full and I have an opportunity to build our next barn. And then I'll get the opportunity and prove out to everybody that even on a larger barn, on a larger farm, you can leave calves with their mom and they'll do well. And it's actually more efficient because it's labor intensive raising calves and why do it if the mom will do it for you? It's like a win-win situation. We can do better and I'm going to make it happen.